Hello there guys, welcome back to Eunice Talks Football, welcome back to a brand new video, I hope all of you are doing well today as we get into the latest, what is going on and I'm very very happy to be able to come on here and share what is going to be very good news for Chelsea fans, not so very good news for other fans, we'll get to that towards the end of the video, however... Before we start, make sure to check out the latest video over on Shootout. There's two for you to go and watch, actually. One is definitely out, and that's the Tottenham Chelsea review, where me and George go over Chelsea. Go and check that out. And there is Premier League reactions for the last Premier League weekend, so make sure you're going to catch that as well. If it's not out already, it will be very shortly, and if it is out, then it's out. Watch it. Enjoy. Now, to catch all the content on here, do not forget to hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell to be notified of all the uploads as they come. Watch along this Sunday, Chelsea versus Manchester City. That's going to be a very interesting one as well as the review after that and all the socials on screen in the description too much appreciated let's get cracking and let's start off with the good news we're going to start off with the good news we're going to start off with a smile and as i've said for chelsea fans today is a good day there's nothing nothing negative to say today is a great day actually actually tell a lie nah, an expected bit of news is coming too but let's start off with the good news let's start off on a blast so here it is Christopher Nkunku is expected to return at the end of this month, early December. Excellent news for Chelsea. On top of that, we have Chelsea will take no risks with Christopher Nkunku. He will not be on the pitch this weekend. The club want to wait and be careful as he's important to the present and future. He will be ready after the international break. Lo and behold, Nkunku is back. Soon. <laughs> soon. Not yet, but soon. However, this gave us the indication that he's almost good to go. And if we really, really wanted to, we could play him on Sunday against Man City. But we're not going to. And that's the correct decision. Don't. One game is one game. The season is a long season. Sacrifice one game against Man City. <clears throat> He might not make the difference anyway, if I'm being honest, right? Let's be real. It's Man City. Um, but after that, he might be the light in shining armour that could come in and transform Chelsea's fortunes in terms of goals, in terms of even more creation, in terms of some stability up front and converting, getting goals and winning games. He could be the catalyst. He could be. I don't think he's going to be the be-all and end-all, but I think he's definitely going to be someone that is noticeably someone that we're missing right now. So when he comes back, if we have a way to be able to blend and Kunku and Cole Palmer together, this is going to get very interesting. Now, where is Nkunku going to fit? That's the question. That's the question. Because with Nkunku, we initially managed to get him in and we had the belief that we would use him as a 10. As, or you can sum it up to an attacking midfielder or a second striker. That was the initial plan. Now, with that, Cole Palmer has been playing really well. <clears throat> whether he plays central or whether he cuts out to the wing and then he does it there. At the same time, we thought Jackson would come in and be the guy up top, but we've been struggling for goals only up until the Tottenham game. And all of a sudden, he's got a hat trick. Now, let's see what Jackson does because goals can create confidence and confidence brings form and form brings goals. And it's just a, it's a vicious, good cycle. So where is Nkunku going to fit if it means that if we're going to have to sacrifice someone, who is it going to be? Do we stick Nkunku up top and we sacrifice Jackson? Do we stick Nkunku in the attacking midfielder position and we sacrifice Gallagher? Do we stick him on the wing? That's not an option <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. Um, so let me know, how would you fit Nkunku in the team? Or, or do we have an, a complete formation change? Do we have two men up top? One in behind slightly and Kunku Jackson, you know? Um, do we have an extra midfielder perhaps and we're able to put Nkunku alongside a Gallagher and a Cole Palmer? Uh, we sacrifice somewhere else on the pitch. How would you fit Nkunku in? Let me know down below what you would do. I'm very curious to see. Now, the international break is after the Manchester City game. So this weekend is it. We finish Man City, then it's international break. Then we come back for Newcastle. He will be there. He will be there. So make sure you will be there. 
Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Let's get into now the not so good but expected kind of it's going to happen anyway sort of news. Let's get into it. Here it is. Chelsea defender Thiago Silva is in talks with Fluminense over a return to Brazil after the current season. This has come out from Jorge Nicola, who is working for Paramount Plus. Now, Paramount Plus are a massive broadcaster for the Premier League in South America, and hence why he's coming out with this news, because clearly he's heard something from Fluminense. And it's no coincidence that the president of Fluminense has decided to speak at the very same time. So you can bet your house and everything that you own that there are talks going on between Thiago Silva and Fluminense at the moment for something to happen at the end of the season. Here's the president. Mr. President! Fluminense president Mario Bittencourt on Thiago Silva. Hang on, can I just say, what, is, he, is, he, is he Brazilian? Is he South American? I actually don't know. But what is it with these South Americans now, Brazilians that are coming up with all sorts of kind of not very South American names? You know, Richarlison. That's not South American. <laughs> that's not Brazilian. Bittencourt. That sounds Dutch. Anyway, let's get into it. I continue with this desire to bring him in. For the, pl for the brilliant player he is, for his high performance at his age, that he's a great tricolor. I'm sure that one day he could play for Fluminense again. You've heard it from the horse's mouth. He's going. He's going. Talks are clearly going. Look, he's, he's actively coming out and saying, I'm trying to get him. So that means talks are there, right? It's going to happen. Make your peace. At the end of the season, Thiago Silva, at the right age of 39, is going to be going home. I I've come to terms with it. And look... I've got nothing against it. I think if that's what he wants to do to wrap up his career, then go and do it, my friend. Because he's 39, <laughs> approaching 40. He's going to call it a day very, very soon. It would be right if he feels like he wants to end it at home, that he goes home and he ends it there. I've got nothing against that. And Thiago Silva's done everything possible in a Chelsea shirt at his age to do what he's done. I can only wish that we had him when he was 28. If we had him when he was at his young prime, and he still, to be honest, his prime never ended. That's the thing with Thiago Silva. His prime never ended. He's still in his prime. <laughs> but in terms of his prime as in age, if we had him alongside John Terry, oh my God. John Terry and prime young Thiago Silva. Oh my God. Oh my God. And look, to be fair, look, we had our fair share of centre backs. I'm not against the way that it went. I'm happy with what we had. I'm happy we had, of course, Ricardo Carvalho, flipping legend. We, I'm glad we had Gary Cahill. I'm glad we had Alex. I'm glad we had David Luiz. Um, I'm glad we had these guys. I'm glad we had these guys. Um, and then afterwards, Rudiger. And I, I'm, I'm glad we had them. But I can only imagine, imagine we had JT and Thiago Silva. I mean, it would have been ridiculous. No one would have scored. We would have, we would have broken our record of 15 goals conceded in the Premier League season. We would have definitely gone down to 10. <laughs> so anyway, that's Thiago Silva and that's the latest on him. I wish him the best if he does decide to go home. And um, yeah, I'm just sad that he's going to be leaving Chelsea the way that we are at the moment and not competing for trophies when he did come in and win trophies with us. So that's, that's, the, only, that's the only regret. Anyway. Let's get into other news. Now, with Emma Hayes. US soccer officials are in London to finalise their move for Emma Hayes. Hayes has agreed to become head coach of the United States national team and talks are taking place to seal a deal that is expected to make Hayes the highest paid female coach in the world. Listen, listen. I'm gutted that she's leaving Chelsea, but if she's leaving for this, go and get the bag, Emma. Go and get the bag. You deserve it. The Emma Hayes, if there's one women's manager on the planet that deserves this, it's her. Without question. As far as I'm concerned. And anyone can try and testify here. I'm not trying to prove a point here. I'm actually curious. If anyone knows of any other women's manager, male or female, right, that has accomplished big things. I'm talking CV, 
crazy, crazy amount of trophies. Let me know who. I can only think if there's the manager of Barcelona, because Barcelona win trophies for fun. Um, Barcelona, uh, fe 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 femin fe Femini, is it Feminini? Or uh, the, the, the women's team, basically. Um, I can only suggest Lyon. Perhaps in France, I know in they've been fairly successful. Wolfsburg, I think, have been fairly successful. But when you look at Emma Hayes' CV, it's just trophies galore. Trophy, 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 trophy. It's endless. And she done that herself. She really, she done that herself, all herself. For all those years at Chelsea, she done it herself. So she's going to end up being the highest paid women's manager in the world. Good luck, Emma, and go and enjoy the American dollars. <laughs> <laughs> go and enjoy it because you deserve it absolutely deserved but it's going to be a sad day when she goes and there's, there's going to be a big 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 tribute I don't care it has to be done and for anyone going oh no this is a bit overkill no because if she was in the men's game and doing what she done for the women but in the men's game she would be classed with Jose Mourinho like that's what she is seen as for Chelsea uh, in terms of the women's the women's game she is the most successful women's manager by far it's not even a debate. So her leaving is going to hit Chelsea Football Club as a whole. It's, it's a piece being taken away. It really is. It really is. So Emma Hayes, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be sad. But let's see how this season ends. And I hope it ends with even more trophies. And then we can wave a massive goodbye and see her off to the United States. Um, now... Other news, before we wrap up, news coming out of Arsenal. Now, this is where I said the other fans are not going to be so happy. Um, starting off with the Gooners. <laughs> Arsenal, what's going on? Thomas Partey has told Arsenal that he wants to leave the club in January amid interest from Juventus. This has come from the mail. Um, so I always stress, take it with a pinch of salt. But I think this would be ridiculous. For Arsenal to let go of Partey is stupid. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Arsenal fans, let me know in the chat. Are you happy with this? Because if I was an Arsenal fan, I'd be fuming. Fuming in the sense of, look, I know they've got Declan Rice now, which is great. But when something happens to Declan Rice, who are they turn into? Jorginho? Mm. Look, we had our scepticism about Jorginho in certain moments. He had his up and downs. And it's the same at Arsenal. In fact, at Arsenal, I think he's had less impact. And we've seen some mistakes, which we told you was going to happen anyway because we suffered the same consequences sometimes. Jorginho decided to cost us a goal here and there. It happens. Um, and he's done the same at Arsenal. But Thomas Partey brings a level of defensive stability, which Declan Rice does bring too. However, <clears throat> when you have to rotate and you have to play in various competitions and you need to you know, rest from time to time, you're not going to play Declan Rice 70 games a year. So Thomas Partey is vital as far as I'm concerned. And if I'm being honest, if there's ever a time where you want to see out a game and you want to shut it down, which is what I feel like Arsenal don't do enough in order to protect themselves and see games through, Thomas Partey is the sort of guy you call upon. So I really think it would be crazy if Arsenal let go of Thomas Partey. But if he goes in January, listen... Arsenal are already starting to look like they're a little bit unstable. Unstable, not unstable. Instability, I mean, but unstable. They're, they're starting to be a little rocky. They're starting to throw games away here and there. They're starting to, you know, maybe hesitate a bit. They're not playing as fluent as they were last season. It's looking a bit weird and different at times. And Thomas Partey, I think, is, is key for Arsenal to, to, to find some stability. So, yeah, let me know your thoughts down below on um, Thomas Partey possibly, possibly leaving Arsenal in January. And to wrap up, the most unsurprising news of 2023 going into 2024 is this. Jaden Sancho or Jason Sancho. Jason Sancho is expected to leave May 9 in January. Listen, I don't know who Jason is. Right, I know about another guy called Jaden, but Jason Sancho, um, if, <laughs> he's leaving Man United. I didn't even know he joined. Who's Jason? <laughs> Transfer News Live. Listen, at Deadline Day Live, what are you guys doing? Massive typo there. It's not Jason, um, unless if Sancho sent his twin brother in to try and take all the heat. I don't know. Anyway, Sancho expected to leave Man United in January. 
of course that's going to happen. And if it doesn't happen, that would be insanity. But he's going to be going. So once again, even now up until this point, we still have no rumors or links in terms of where he's going to. So where do you think he's going to? Do you think he's going to Saudi? Do you think he's going to Turkey? Do you think he's going to the Philippines? <laughs> do you think he's, I don't know, let me know, let me know where you think he's going to, much appreciated, and um, it'll be interesting to see all of your theories in the comment section below, but that wraps up the video for today, I hope all of you have enjoyed it, let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section with everything that I've discussed, um, from the Nkunku news, Tiago Silva, Emma Hayes, J uh, Thomas Partey, and San Jason Santo, yeah, good old Jace, uh, let me know your thoughts down below, much appreciated, and I will see all of you tomorrow, for a double upload it will be a double upload on here but for now go and check out the other content like i've already suggested to you guys over on shootout when me and george have gone through the motions on chelsea and everyone else so make sure you have a look enjoy give us the sub over there and give us a sub over here thank you very much hit that button and that notification bell to be notified once i've uploaded smash the like button if you've enjoyed this and i will see all of you tomorrow for a brand new one or a brand new couple of ones so i'll see you then have a good one people enjoy your evening take care and peace.